What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of Dempsec. So those on Discord know that I've been on a bit of a high air as both me and Aaron have. He's not here right now in this video, but we've been on a bit of a hiatus. Um, I guess we've just kind of not really had too many ideas when it comes to making videos. Um, I don't know, we, we, I've, I've been making more and more of these videos and trying to improve the quality and all that kind of stuff and what I used to do was just find a new cool tool and just go ahead and show you how to install it, how to use it and yeah that I don't think that really cuts it now I'm trying to make these videos more high production value. That being said what I found a while ago was what you're looking at now which is Google's DNS over HTTPS system. So it's essentially as you see right oop, just as I uh, knock everything over on my desk um, you see right here, we've got a pretty interesting uh, URL here. And what it allows you to do is essentially do HTTP request... Uh, no, not HTTP, DNS requests over HTTPS. And you may be wondering why that's so important. And the reason why that is, especially in the UK at the moment, is you now know that we have the Snoopers Charter, which essentially means that all ISPs must uh, gather your browsing habits, essentially, and the way in which they're doing that is with DNS requests. DNS requests are obviously not encrypted. So as they go over your uh, ISP's network, they can quite easily pluck out these DNS requests. And even if they don't know the exact content of what you're viewing, they can tell that if you're going to, if you're doing a DNS re to request to google.com, then you're most likely, you know, browsing google.com. And this is essentially a way to um, overcome that. And everyone knows that I'm a bit of a privacy nerd. I uh, I don't know. I like I like tools that enhance my privacy. So I, I was looking at this and I wanted to find a way to, you know, use this as my actual DNS server. And obviously it's not an IP address, it's a URL. And um, obviously, that being said, I can't just go ahead and open my Windows settings here and um, go ahead and install that. Uh, install that, put in the IP address for this and use it. So what I've gone ahead and done, if we head over to GitHub, uh, not Bash Bunny payloads, maybe we'll look at those in a little bit. If we head over to GitHub, and uh, right here, I've gone ahead and made a small project. And the code is pretty simple, and it's very, very hacked together. So if you guys are interested in contributing to that, to this, that would be amazing. But um, essentially what we're going to do, and uh, let's just go ahead and clear my SSH over here and bring it over. So this isn't actually on a Raspberry Pi, but I do recommend this being installed on a Raspberry Pi. And uh, let's, let's, yeah, well, I've already gone ahead and installed this, so I'll just remove it. So what we're going to need to do is install uh, Node.js and that's about it, but we need the latest version. And the one in Ubuntu's repository, repository by default is a little bit behind and obviously we want to be running the most up-to-date software so we're not going to get owned by everything on the internet. So I really recommend going ahead and using um, DigitalOcean's actual tutorial on how to install Node.js and it's this one, how to install using a PPA. So a PPA will work on, um, should work on your Raspberry Pi, I'm pretty sure it will because it's just this node source setup, whatever, and it's Debs, so Debian should go ahead and work. So I'll leave a link to this in the description and what you're going to want to do is follow this how to install using a PPA and you can literally just go ahead and copy and paste these one after another. You don't have to do this unless you uh, want to actually check what you do, what it's installing, but it just installs a PPA which is just a, uh, a location where your system knows to get packages from. And then you go ahead and do sudo app get install node.js and at that point you caught up with where I'm going to start now. So. I'm going to go ahead and grab the link to this, and obviously the link will be in the description, and I'm going to paste this. And what we need to do is do a git clone, and that'll give us this folder here. And as you see, we've got the three files that were here, include, uh, well, those will also be here. If we do ls-la, we can see the .git folder and all that kind of stuff. The next thing we, that we're going to need to do is do npm install. And that's it. We just type npm, npm install. And what that's going to do is have a look in this package.json file here. And where I've got the dependencies here, it's going to automatically install those for us so we don't have to worry about it. 
So at this stage, we've got everything we need to run this. What we need to do now is run the entire thing as root. Because we're opening port 53 on this system, you know, DNS port, uh, that's actually a privileged port, so we need to do it as root. Uh, there are ways to go ahead and give uh, non-admins access to certain ports, but we won't cover this right now. Um, this is just a proof of concept. If you guys want to contribute to this, or if I contribute further, um, that'll be an option. So if we do sudo uh, node index.js, and it'll ask for my password. And that's it, it's running. Um, as I said, the script's not complete, so you're not going to see very much output here. But let's let's just go ahead and test this. So I've got this set up over here. And uh, let's just exit out of this so you know how to do this kind of stuff. Clear screen. Um, let's just get the IP address of this system first. So you can see we've got 11.35. Oh, rerun that. So if we do NS lookup, what you can do, so as you can see, by default it's using 8.8.8.8, .8 .8, which is the DNS server I've got set up on my system. But if you type server and then the IP address that you want to test stuff against, we can uh, do DNS request against this little um, this little server we've got running here. So if I do google.com, we're going to see new request for google.com and we get a response back. So it works just like exactly how DNS works. But instead of doing like a regular DNS request where it goes across uh, your ISP's network and all that kind of stuff, what it does is it hits this, which would be your Raspberry Pi, and then it does a HTTPS request over to Google to get the to get the IP address of the host. So we've checked that this works. So if I'm I'm going to go ahead and change my DNS settings, and we should be fine. We might see a lot of errors here, as I say, very hacked together, not completely ready to go. But I just think it's a cool thing, and I think it's something that we could all work together on. So you can see here, all of the requests are coming through here, and you can see you cannot read properly, there's errors. Um, there's some things that aren't implemented, but I can go to Google, and it'll go ahead and load, as expected. So it's perfectly possible to web browse over this and use this daily, but any issues that you do come across... Uh, if you go over to GitHub and um, go to Issues, you can make a new issue, and I will strive to go ahead and fix that. But this is just one of those things to keep in mind when you're browsing online. Um, you can use the likes of Tor, but the way in which Snoopers Charter seems to be implemented in the UK is purely on DNS requests. And if you're someone who, you know, browses all over the internet, and especially if you're just browsing, you know, hacking stuff, it can be very easily misinterpreted by someone looking at it just by your DNS requests. If you're going to the likes of hack forums all the time, you could be caught up in something. They could be saying, oh, you've been to this website, you're definitely doing illegal stuff, and you may just be browsing, and that's that's the main issue I have with Snoopers Charter. So that's it for this video. I know it's been kind of short, just under 10 minutes, but hopefully you've enjoyed it. And if you have any requests for this software or any future requests for videos, go ahead and leave them in the comments. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.